الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله نو no, uh, ابن راجب الحنبلي رحمه الله he was in discussing Laylatul Qadr and the last 10 days of Ramadan he said that this night is where the believers are proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the, the angels the angels said as related with qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ard khalifa qalu wa taj'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima' wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nuqaddisu lak qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun so when your lord, your lord said to the angels I'm going to place a vicegerent in the earth. They said, will you place therein one who, work, who will work corruption and shed blood while we glorify your praises and extol your sanctity? He said, verily I know what you know not. Allah Ta'ala knows that yes, there are some misguided, devious human beings who are obsessed with corruption and spread and shed much blood. But the overwhelming majority are capable of responding to the ancient call, Alastu bi rabbikum. Qalu bala. They said, Ahi, when your Lord said, Am I not your Lord? They said, Certainly. Certainly. They bore witness. And tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, you are bearing witness that that ancient call, it still lives on in our hearts. And it resonates throughout the entirety of our being. And it brings us, not just here, but all over this ummah, the believers are gathering in the houses of Allah and pouring out their hearts, standing in prayer until their feet are, are in pain. What a beautiful pain. As one of the lovers said, Al-Adhabu fika afbun wal-bu'du fika qurbun That torment for your sake is sweetness and being distant for your sake is nearness. Al-Adhabu fika and so we're showing Allah that the pain in the feet, the hoarseness in the voice, the immune system down a little because we can't sleep as much as the soul or the nafs wants to. But we're showing our love for Allah is greater. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ مِنْ حُبِّهِمْ لِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ أَوْ أَيِّ أَحَدٍ سِوَاهِ It's greater than their love for anyone or anything other than Him. That's what we're showing tonight and throughout this month of Ramadan, culminating tomorrow night. Because we still have one more night to go. خِتَامُهُ مِسْكِ وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافِسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ the seal is sweet must. And let those who vie and compete, let them compete for that. But we're showing Allah knew. This is our potential. This is our potential. What we witnessed when this masjid was filled and the parking lot, the designated prayer area was filled and all of the back rooms were filled. This is the potential of Bani Adam. This is what Allah knew. He's Al-Alim. He knew that despite 
circumstances, despite the passage of time between us and the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that that light lives on, that that power lives on, that that, that, that desire to respond to the call lives on. And it doesn't live on in us. By the grace of Allah, that light is stronger in us. And there, of course there are others besides us is much stronger in their hearts. But it's alive even in the hearts of those people who aren't in the masjid. They recognize Allah's Lord. We are mentioning last night. Does anyone here know anyone on the face of this earth who has named their child God? Do you know anyone who has named their child Allah? People who don't even profess faith, they don't do that. Why? Because they recognize La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And they stop. There's something inside of them that prevents them. It's like Abu Jahl or Abu Lahab. Just say it. You belie Muhammad. You destroy his mission. He couldn't say that good word. And they're prevented from defiling the great name. Ismail Allah. Allah. And that's just a, 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 a small portion of that light lives on in their hearts. Our mission, my dear brothers and sisters, is to bring it out of them. That's our mission, is to, to, to bring the truth that will fuel that light and strengthen that light. Just as our light has been strengthened by the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhal nabi, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadheera wa da'iyan illallahi bi idnihi wa sirajan munira. O oh Prophet, we sent you as a witness, as a giver of glad tidings, as a warner, as one who calls to Allah by his command and as a luminous lamp. Fakhr al-Din al-Razi, he said, the nature of a lamp is that, so these are those lamps, you know, the old school lamps with the flame on the end and the handle on the other end. He said, you can light an infinite number of lights from that original light and it never diminishes from the strength of the original flame. And the original light is the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of us are candles that have been lit from the lamp of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now we have a responsibility at a time when darkness is descending on the world to bring the light of Muhammad to the people of these lands. To bring the light of Muhammad to, to the people of this land so that people can find their way in the darkness. So people can find their way in the darkness just as Allah pulled us out of darkness. Just as Allah pulled us out of darkness with the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's during these nights that we strengthen that light so that it transcends. We see these lamps. The only reason they illuminate this room is because the light they contain transcends the physical limits of the glass or the plastic. Sometimes you see a dying light. It barely illuminates. It barely transcends its case. But when it transcends its case, it illuminates. But it illuminates in a special way. It illuminates when it joins with the other lamps, it creates one field of light. You can't distinguish between this light and that light when you look across. You see one unified field. You see one unified field. This is a, an effect of Tawheed. All of our lights will come together, they will make one powerful light. Whose, whose impact, influence can't be distinguished from the next. And that's what's going to light up this world. It's happening, my dear brothers and sisters. It's happening. 
has been amplified by Gaza. It's been amplified by Gaza. I will, I will venture that for every innocent person killed in Gaza, at least 100 people have taken shahada all over this world. If not a thousand. Without, if not a thousand. Because they, they, the light of faith is shining in them. The light of faith, the light of truth, the light of, of certainty, the light of la ilaha illallah, the light of tawheed. And for people who are living in darkness, when they see that light, and you hear them, you hear them on YouTube, Instagram, whatever that light is that they have, I want it. Right? That's what Megan Rice said, right? The TikTok lady who saw the people in Gaza saying, La, saying, La ilaha illallah, inna lillah, inna lillah wa inni ilihi rajun, alhamdulillah, as they hold their dead children. There was a lady in Alabama, the heart of the Bible Belt, Caucasian American lady. And she saw, she's looking at the video, and in the translation, she sees God. All praises for God. Verily, we come from God, and unto God we return. God, God, God. And the lady said, If my two daughters had been murdered like this, I wouldn't have God to think about. Where is that coming from? Where is that strength coming from? I need to know. And the lady started and Tara started reading the Quran in the heart of the Bible belt. She took Shahada. I heard there were five people that took Shahada here after Juma. This is happening. This is happening. When the victory of Allah comes, the where the help of Allah comes and the victory, and you will see people entering into the deen of Allah in crowds. Glorify the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. Verily, he is most accepting of repentance. This, this is a spiritual reality. Alhamdulillah, our hearts haven't been totally consumed by this materialism. So that all the light is put out. La illallah. La illallah. They talk about artificial intelligence. I'm not going to repeat last night. If you at San Ramon, you heard the artificial intelligence talk over there. But I say this much, I say this much, Alhamdulillah, they, are, they named it artificial intelligence. Because there's nothing like the real thing. The artificial intelligence is based on replicating the neurological functions of the brain. But we know true intelligence is the brain working in conjunction with the heart. And they say uh, it's all neuroscience. Neuroscience can't answer why the heart, when it's transplanted, from one human being to another, certainly that, that second human being knows about mathematical formulas they never knew. They start liking classical music. Who taught them classical music? They never studied ca classical music. It defies the analogy that the brain is where the learning goes on. This is documented science. La ilaha illallah. They can replicate the brain, but there's nothing like the real thing. Then Allah. May Allah bless us to continue to be the people of the heart. May Allah bless us to be the people of the heart. In conclusion, because you're waiting to listen to uh, Ustaz 
Islam, al-haq muqal. Fairy don't laugh, but you're trying to make some room for Rumi, so we have to move over and move out. And Dr. Ali Atai, <laughs> Allah, Allahu, Allahu Adam, wal Musta'an. But Allahumma salli ala Rasulillah. I forgot what I was going to say. I make his people of the heart. People of the heart. People of the heart. La ilaha illallah. Ramadan is about the Quran. And in this world, Alam al Shahada. How did the Quran appear in Alam al Shahada? Qul man kana duwa li jibreela fa annu nazzalu ala qalbika bi idnillah musaddaqa lima bain yaday wa huda wa bushra lil mu'mineen. Say whomsoever is an enemy of Muhammad. For verily, of Jibreel rather, for verily he brings it, the revelation down to your heart, to the heart of Muhammad. That's where it started. That's where it started. And then who succeeds in understanding it? أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not reflect on the Qur'an or are their hearts sealed up and at the end of the day who succeeds the ones who have the best brains and when all is said and done on a day no amount of wealth or benefit or children will be of any benefit only those benefited were those who come before Allah with a rectified heart. And Ramadan is about rectifying the heart. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladheena man qablikum la'alakum tattaqoon. O you believers, fasting has been ordained for you as it was ordained for those who preceded you in order that you grow in this quality of taqwa, of this consciousness of Allah that leads towards willingly implementing his orders and avoiding, avoiding his prohibitions. Where is the locus of taqwa? At taqwa ha huna. At taqwa ha huna. At taqwa ha huna. Wa yushiru ila sadrihi yani qalbihi thalath marat. The piety is here, the piety is here, the piety is here. So as we engage the Qur'an, Shah Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an, then the taqwa grows. And as the taqwa grows, what happens? Alif Lam Mim, Dalika al Kitabu la raiba fi huda lil muttaqeen. Then the guidance of the Quran is the hearts become more receptive to the guidance of the Quran. And as the hearts become more receptive to the guidance of the Quran, those love messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us. Through his eternal speech in the Quran, they condition our hearts and they become softer and they become even more receptive. And then it's a mutually reinforcing relationship. That's what Ramadan is all about. And that's what the dunya cannot take away from the Muslims. So may Allah bless us to remain the people of the heart. May Allah Ta'ala may bless us to cherish Ramadan. May Allah bless us not to be the people that long for Ramadan and the blessings it contains after it's gone. One of the poets said, Do you neglect the one that you love while he's your neighbor? And then you're asking and seeking him out after the place to visit him has far, far away after they've moved away and gone. Blame yourself. Don't blame the beast or now the trucks and cars that took them away. And die broken hearted because you have no excuse. Ramadan is still here. We still have an opportunity to make up in this final day 
what we've missed during the previous days. We still have an opportunity to, to get, join the caravan of the righteous. Al-A'mal bi khawatimiha. Actions are based on their last. May Allah bless the last of Ramadan to be the best of Ramadan. May Allah bless the last of Ramadan to be an atonement for what might have passed previously in Ramadan of neglect. May Allah bless this gathering, this community to continue to grow and grow and prosper. All of what, 50, 60, I don't know how many square feet, may it all be filled up with khair. May it all be filled up with the remembrance of Allah. May it all be filled up with people praying on their painful feet. Following the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And when asked about praying on his painful feet What did he say? An Aisha radiallahu anha Qalat Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqumu min al-layli Hatta tawarramat Aw tafattarat qadamah Faqultu Lima tasnu hadha ya Rasulullah وَقَدْ غَافَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَعَخَّرَ فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَفَلَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Aisha relates that the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to stand in prayer at night until his feet swole up or, or until his feet cracked. And she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why are you doing this when Allah has forgiven any uh, mistake in judgment you might have committed in the past or in the future. And he said, should I not then love to be a thankful servant? My dear brothers and sisters, the pain, the headaches, the dizziness from fasting, the pain from praying, the, the sore throats and the coughing, that's all an expression of our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great blessing of Ramadan. It's all an expression of gratitude. And we should thank Allah that out of all the people on the face of this earth, He has chosen us to give this gratitude. So it's actions of gratitude. The, the thankfulness of the tongue is real and it has its reward. But also, there's also the thankfulness of the Lord. O family of Dawood, engage in acts of thankfulness. And very few of our servants are truly thankful. We thank Allah, we thank Allah, we thank Allah for making us amongst the aqillah, for making us amongst those few who are expressing our gratitude for this great blessing of Ramadan through our prayer, our Quran, through our fasting, our awrad, our avkar, our burning eyes, losing sleep. Walhamdulillah, wa salat wa salam ala rasulillah, wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa